Hey, what's going on guys? Crazy here. Welcome back to another Cyberpunk 2077 video and today let's talk about the importance of life pets in this game. It's actually one of the biggest decisions that you start with in the beginning of the game. It immediately influences how you start a game but on top of that it also has ripple effects on your overall story and pretty much everything else that you're going to be doing in this game. So in this video I will show you some of the biggest differences between these life pets as well as maybe help you out with which one of these would be the best fit for you. As always, if you enjoyed this video at any point, it would be super awesome if you left a like on it and let's jump right into it. So let's begin with the choices and the type of impact that you can expect them to have over your game. And as a matter of fact, both the life path that you chose as well as your skill point investment will have a ripple kind of effect on the way you experience the story in Cyberpunk 2077. This includes everything from the start of of the game with the prologue being vastly different depending on the three life paths that you choose, the circumstances and how soon you meet certain characters, all the way up to opening brand new dialogue options and even being able to access quests or branches within these quests. This is also going to extend to the benefits that you get and it has been confirmed before that this can include various items that you get as rewards based on your choices and even romance options with various characters that can only be accessible with various life path options. Of course, we also have to give a disclaimer. This doesn't mean that your three separate life paths will lead to three different games. Of course, eventually the story does condense and the lines between these paths kind of become almost blurred, but your choices will still continue to hold that cause and effect relationship with the rest of the game and you will carry that later down the line. And it, that has been explained and I will go over this when we cover each of the life paths. So let's begin with the first one, with the nomad i'm seeing a lot of you guys enjoying the nomad lifestyle as a nomad you start in the badlands you're what people in the big city might even consider an outsider in the vast desert plains of the badlands life is definitely not easy communities are few and far in between resources are scarce and the wasteland full of chemicals and unchecked resource extraction guarantees nothing will ever grow here but despite all of this there are still opportunities for you at the end of the day you are are a scavenger so to speak you know how to get stuff the old-fashioned way so if you are the type of player who enjoys the life of an experienced smuggler the freedom to roam and drive everywhere you see and even more so if you value your connections with the others then this is probably the best choice for you in fact in this life path V did used to be a part of a clan but unfortunately that family is now falling apart which is why he is searching a new beginning into the city and this is where your pro as a nomad pretty much starts in this garage somewhere in the middle of the badlands trying to fix your broken down car but your presence here doesn't go unnoticed so eventually you do have a run-in with the local sheriff which judging by the NCPD badge that he displays he has jurisdiction over these parts eventually he does let you go though so this is where you move on to meeting with your contact to smuggle a very important Arasaka package into the night city that contact you guessed it is none other than than Jackie that has the package in his possession. So all that is left now is to group with him and get over the border crossing all the way into the city. Unfortunately, as you might have guessed it, these are the badlands, so things never are as easy as they seem. On their way to the border, V and Jackie have to go through the border guards who seem to know more than they are willing to tell. Fortunately enough, both you and Jackie manage to pass them quickly, but not before providing a hefty little bribe over there. But as you pass through the crossing, eventually you get cut off by Arasaka security who demand you stop and hand over the corporate property that you are trying to smuggle into the city, revealing that this was all in fact a setup. This leads up to a chase scene with the security forces that ends up in a shootout throughout the biotechnica facility outside of the city. But eventually you do manage to shake off your pursuers and finally get into the city and here is pretty much where the prologue kind of and this brings us to the street kid life path. This is pretty much in contrast with the nomads. You lived most of your life in the city. As a street kid, you know the ins and outs of the city like the palm of your hand. The streets, the gangs, the slang, the type of things that could present favorable opportunities later in the game if you choose this path. If this type of knowledge of the streets is what you're looking for or if you're the type who enjoys a kind of like rags to riches kind of style,
story where you begin as a street person and then climb into like the wealth then this is probably going to be the best one for you now this life path gets you started in the El Coyote Co a bar in Haywood that V seems to frequent quite a bit as you enjoy your meal the bartender lets you know that he hasn't paid his debt to a new fixer called Kirk so he asks you in exchange for forgiving your bar tab to see if you can settle anything somehow with him and that is exactly what you will do you will eventually get to talk with this person with the fixer and eventually you do reach a deal the deal well you are now tasked with stealing a luxury vehicle from one of Arasaka's employees a Rayfield Arendite 59 located somewhere in Westbrook and this is one of the most expensive cars that you will get in Night City once you reach that point you will manage to break into the car with a device that Kirk supplies you and this is gonna let you enter the car and even start it up but before you can even drive off this is where you are taken by surprise by none other than you guessed it Jackie himself who is also in on it to steal the car and make some quick profit for himself but before even V gets out of the car both him and Jackie are interrupted by a sudden arrival of the NCPD who yeah end up capturing you but before being taken into custody the Arasaka employee who owns the car comes in and sees the commotion at which point he well uses his reputation as a corpo to order the NCPD inspector to of course quote unquote dump your bodies into the local river but because police officers hate corpos as much as everybody else they only end up knocking you out and throwing you somewhere in an alley and from that point on the prologue as a street kid pretty much ends but this brings us to the corporal life path in this life path you are born into high life everything comes easy and you have both the resources and the connections to make it happen this of course if you don't mind being a soulless fiend whose sole desire in life is to climb the corporate ladder at the expense of the other equally soulless corporal rats that are pursuing the same thing as you are well except that even V eventually realizes that this level of depravity is too much even for him so he decides or well she decides depending on your choice to turn against their own employer the Arasaka Corporation so if being the man on the inside is your kind of thing and taking down the very same concept that you're part of is your thing then this is probably the best route for you and I would argue probably the best chance you get at taking down the most powerful entities in the universe of cyberpunk 2077 but in this life path V works for the Arasaka Corporation's counterintelligence division in the prologue you start by by looking in this mirror in one of the bathrooms located in the very Arasaka HQ tower that you work in. This is also probably the only times in the early game where you get a chance to go inside the building of a mega corporation, at least on the upper levels, and see what it is to walk inside of it freely, which is something that you will do. You can walk up to your office, even interact with your computer over there and access the company's emails. But climbing the corporate ladder in this world isn't all fair game, and as a matter of fact, the higher up corporate always resort to all kinds of ways to steal promotions within their network and even kill off the employees who dare stay in their way. This is where V's boss comes into play, Arthur Jenkins, who um, tasks V out in the beginning to take out his opposition, Susan Abernathy. Don't worry though, because she's just as corrupt and soul devoided as pretty much everybody in the higher up ladder. But to achieve that, Arthur puts V in contact with one of his underworld connections. That connection, you guessed it again, is none other than Jackie himself. This is pretty much that scene where we saw the AV bringing the main character into the city. You can see like the whole city from um, far high up and it does look very beautiful. But this brings you to Lizzie's bar in Watson District. Upon landing and following a brief altercation with some local basketball players, V makes their way into the bar where they finally meet Jackie. But before being able to put their plan into action, Arasaka forces already already burst into the bar, being led by none other than Susan Abernathy. It seems that she somehow found out about V's plan and as a result strips him of their cyberware corporate powers and even fires them from the corporation. So this results in the corpo prologue ending and the rest of the story beginning from that point on. Now as a corpo, some of the possible benefits that you will have, especially after climbing the corporate ladder and using your connection is of course to being better abled at reading people and reading in between the lines especially when it comes to other people in suit other people in power you will know what they mean when they're trying to avoid purposefully the subject at hand this also 
comes especially useful when having conversations with these people and opening up new branches in the same stories or maybe even uncovering secrets that might help you to better finish that part of the story or that part of the mission. Having access to high life could also mean that you might be able to acquire access to certain vendors and unique high-end equipment that other life pets simply can't afford due to their lack of status. And this could also possibly be romance options that are unique to these life paths, to the corporal life path, especially when it comes to Meredith Stout that eventually we do know that V has a run-in with and um, yeah, depending on the life path, you could either have a really brief and easy conversation with her or she could just like push you around and you're not going to get anything out of her. But again, we are finally just over a week from the release of Cyberpunk 2077, we are getting closer and closer by the day, so if you don't want to see more Cyberpunk related content here on this channel, definitely go ahead, leave a like on this video, leave your impressions of the video and finally also consider subscribing if you want more awesome content like this and I'll see you guys in the next one.